Today on the iBuyer Experiment, we're going to talk about the status of the market. Is it cooling? And what is really going on with the institutionalization of real estate? Is that a thing? Is Wall Street to blame? And a special Zoodelia member shout out. What's up, guys? Hey. How's it going? How's it going? Trying to put a deal together. Sorry. Always. <laughs> so that's always a good always thing. Always putting deals together. <clears throat> well, deal. If that's the thing. So what is the deal? What is the dealio? Well, the housing market is showing signs of cooling off. And I think that we're all kind of feeling it a little bit in our own ways. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the state of the market. Yeah. Wow. On uh, realtor.com, my open door preliminary offer went from 550 to like 498. I was what? like, you got to be kidding me. Your house depreciated <laughs> 10% per their algorithms on the website. Okay, uh, so they just <laughs> tighten their belt per their per their buys is what they did. That means they're not forecasting that that same crazy growth that they were, right? So now it's a balanced out. They're going to actually buy what the house is worth versus took, projected value. So you got five fifty when I, when I had the chance. Dang it! <laughs> you you could have got five fifty a couple months ago, <clears throat> and now five hundred. Basically, yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's, that's an eleven percent <clears throat> price reduction, actually. I buyers may be sharpening their pencils. Yes, right? they are. Like you're looking down the barrel of, of maybe just a cooling market and. Well, and they turned a profit too, right? They did. That's interesting. Both both big retail <coughs> I buyers turned yeah. a profit in yes. quarter one, 2022, um, open door and offer pad. So that was exciting yep. and interesting. And they're still taking down just just a ginormous amount of homes. Again, interesting, exciting. Uh, what, do, what do we think the future of iBuying looks like in a normal market? I, for one, still think it's going to pick up and speed up for them because the consumer has become so used to just list your house, sell now, mm -hmm. and, you know, close when I want, <clears throat> get what I want. It, 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 it's favored the seller now for about 24, 36 months. And I think that that's long enough a lot of times to burn in their cortex that this is how it's going to be. And when it doesn't happen. Yeah, exactly. They freak out. Well, <laughs> think, of, think about this. Who, when someone wants to buy another house and they can't fulfill that contingency, that uh, cash offer is going to look pretty Real good. Real pretty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, people will give up that 5 to 10%. You know, like just like all the reports say, say that they, they do and will around the studies around it. And I think we're going to see more and more of that. Right. So the, the, the markets that they're prevalent in, you know, I think they're going to do just fine. And not only that, they have the ability to, to take 90 days to sell a house, right? Mm -hmm. They can, they can bake that into the margins, um, when they, when they make an offer on that particular property. So I, for one, think that that actually <clears throat> is going to be one of the biggest things that's going to help us through. Um, I don't want to say help because I think that it works on both sides. It, like with rates going with affordability down, mm -hmm. right? Due to rates being so high, inventory still staying extremely low as you know, the market as a whole is obviously keeping demand <clears throat> up. And I think that when they acquire properties, it's still going to keep demand, um, in the favor of the, of the seller. That's, that's what I think. Okay. Okay. Well, we can speak to what we're seeing here at Zudelio and, uh, you know, clearly our offers department makes thousands of offers. And, uh, what we are seeing is that sellers are coming back to us wanting to accept the offer after they've tested the market for like a week and, 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 <laughs> and, and, and did a, and already did a price reduction in a lot of times. Yeah. yeah like the first week, week, in a week yeah. and, and we're going, wait, what, a, wait, what happened? We just made you this offer. And in the ensuing 10 days, you've listed your home and taken a price reduction. And now you want to come back and take our offer. Yeah, that's fine. So we're, we're seeing that over and over and over and over again. So I think that just speaks to that. You mentioned it, it was burned into the seller's cortex. <laughs> is that what you said? That is what I said. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, th I think we're in a different market. And what's really going to be interesting is to see how listing agents kind of rise to this challenge. <clears throat> um, clearly, there's probably some excellent listing agents that have been at this and know how to talk to sellers about price reductions, et cetera. But if you have not yet been in a market where you've had a listing for 90 days, 120 days, six months, three years, I had a listing once for three years. Wow. 
<laughs> and uh, if you've not experienced what that's like to have that communication on a consistent and ongoing basis with your seller to actually, you know, market your property and be able to provide marketing reports and then to be able to talk to the seller and to uh, obtain those price reductions. You know, I think listing agents are are the wild card here and are they going to rise to this challenge? Are we going to see a lot of washout? What's what's going to happen? It's well, and actually even having to market your property, right? Like that's the, that's the whole thing. I think that it's quite, it, there's so many agents that want to hang their hat on um, just photos, right? Like the, for the for the last 24 months, that's all you had to do for the most part was have good professional photos taken. Not and even. now we've seen all these. Well, <laughs> yeah, not even. that's what I'm saying. That was yeah. that was the over and above. That was the, right? the minimum almost, standard. Yeah. Where now I think that and it's it's I mean it, again we've all been in the business long enough that you saw the shift from the crappy photos to the now there's all these companies out there that you know go out take these high quality photos for the agents with these five and six thousand dollar cameras etc. Well, now I think we're going to start seeing, um, you know, a push come in for, for marketing, right? Like for like search, right? Like meaning like um, keywords, stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? And I could see a push into, in, into that. And then <clears throat> so the agents that are more savvy, more tech in that particular space, I think, I think this is really going to be your time because now you're going to be able to showcase and be able to show the sellers that type of data is going to be really important, right? Well, Something to put in your um, toolkit for your listing appointment. I think another thing to put in your toolkit for your listing appointment, I mean, besides cash offers from Zudelio, of course, <laughs> but another thing that you can do is put a floor plan of the property. Mm. Uh, what what we have learned, so NAR did some research on what buyers are looking for when they're looking online at properties. And behind photos, right behind photos, number three came in at floor plans. So <clears> buyers <throat> are actively searching out the floor plan for a property. Yep. So when you're doing your Matterport 3D scan, when you're doing your, your full photo set, make sure you include a floor plan of the property because buyers are actively looking for that specifically. So that's a little, little tool for your tool belt. <laughs> Yeah, I think that that's another thing that we really all need to look at as an industry, right? Is the this online experience that we've created as as you know an everyday society is it, it really hasn't hit the industry, the real estate industry as much as it could or is or is going to, I believe, right? Like, look at the I'll use uh, I'll use a, a well, there, there's a company out there right now that they're basically a large wholesale company that. What they do is, is they'll come in, they tie up the property, then they turn around and sell it to investors. And one of the things that they do is they do 3D Matterports, floor plans, et cetera, that they, that they put out there for that. And that's really elevates the experience and allows the buyer to virtually buy the house, right? So I think that that's something that we can do as an industry to uh, you know create a more certain experience, right? Like not only that, you'll, you're gonna get <coughs> less cancellations in that particular environment. So. Yeah, I there's love, a lot I of opportunity. Mo Matterports are great. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they've been, we, we're actually the first Matterpa Matterport owners in Arizona. <laughs> we bought, Boom. We bought the first camera here. That's so cool. How many years ago? Oh, my gosh. Like, seven? Six? Like seven? That. that was a long time ago. <laughs> How much was that thing back then? Five, Five grand. Thousand dollars. Oh, that's <laughs> At 3 a.m., I saw <clears throat> the ad for it and busted Look, out my credit card this. and bought it. But we got several. we got several listings from it. For sure. Yeah. 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 I'm sure it had to have paid for itself several times oh, over. Yeah. And just like how, you know, just like the cash offer website, the Matterport is now ubiquitous. And I think you, having your iBuyer platform is also becoming ubiquitous for sure too. Well, and I think even as, you know, as, as a lot of the buyers that we work with inside the platform, the investors, right, they're making some of these things, if, especially if the, it's going to be relisted with the real estate agent after they acquire the property that they're gonna be looking at putting some standards in place around these types of things, such as the uh, floor plans, the matter ports, all those types of things, so that you can hold the experience, right? Because at the end of the day, they wanna make sure that the property is showcased, you know, appropriately. Not only that, I think that there's so many of these companies that are continuing to come in and they're building a business around it, right? We're working with the agent on that. So again, it gives that heightened Amazon almost like experience, right? So what else should agents be <clears throat> looking out for in this, cooling off market what should, what should they be doing monkey pox oh dear well one of the things that i know that um we just brushed right over that keith we're, <laughs> we're not even going there yeah <laughs> we're not going to have a uh, clear cooperation violations here yeah for a while um is i, I think that we're going to start seeing like a. I, I was just talking with um uh mark madsen 
about, you know, buy down rate, you know, and all those types of things and, and, you know, being able to structure those types of things because <clears throat> being able to bring, you know, a cash offer to, or turning your buyer's offer to cash, right. And especially when that property's now been on the market for, let's just say in a scenario, 45 days, and now you can go in and offer a 10 day closing. Well, that, and you find the, the right house on the market 45 days. Now you could actually negotiate on it. Right. And so if you can do that, right, get yourself some concessions buy down the rate and get the very best deal. Boom. You, you got yourself an amazing opportunity. Hey, yeah. hey, hey. Our seller is going to start paying for closing costs. I know. Yeah, wait, yeah, what? wait, what's that word? He just said the, what, what? what, what, what does that even mean? The what sellers are going to pay for closing costs. That's what I said, boy. So what is a concession? <laughs> I don't know if we're there yet. <laughs> oh, it's coming. I'm telling you right now, I'll give you your list price, but you're going <clears> to <throat> give me some concessions. You know, it used to be concessions were fairly standard. Sellers oh. would typically pay two to three and a half percent concessions on just about every deal. Yeah, even, so, even I remember sellers would, would price, remember that? Like part of the, yeah. the, the pricing conversations, they would price to try to plan to give the buyer an incentive, a concession. Yep, so we're gonna see those come back. I think we're likely. gonna see them come back. And I like a that free idea. trip to Vegas, right? When we hit them, someone yes. say they get a free trip to Vegas. <laughs> what, Keith, <laughs> Keith you, you told us about that one. What's what's, what's happening? What? In California, apparently a lot of real estate agents are now offering incentives for other agents to show yeah. their listings. Uh, <clears throat> I had asked um, one of our members out there that's very active in our platform if they were seeing a lot of price reductions. And, and he said not too many. He says, but we've now starting to see more incentives than I've ever seen. And I'm sure price reductions are coming next. That's what he said. Mm. Yep. And I was like, what? And he, he said, he gave me an example that if, mm -hmm. uh, with a, with a full price offer, you know, uh, a full paid weekend to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sold. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. No, come okay. on buyer, get this place. I mean, does that work? Like, let's just talk, let's talk. I think the minute. true does test that work? is that the true test is when <clears throat> Lennar starts paying commissions again. <laughs> yes. But we are not bashing on Lennar by any means. Well, Lennar. Great home builder. <laughs> wonderful home builder. Lennar. Like, oh crap. No one's buying houses. We got to pay these agents again. Uh, yeah. That's that is. pretty much what happens. Yep. yep. Remember. Is. Oh, we love agents. Yes. Remember, uh, remember in the, in the great recession, like I said, I saw commissions go, I remember there was one builder who was paying, uh, it was Engel, Engel homes. Uh, 12%. They out, yep. Yep. 12, they went out of business commission or they got bought, but they claim bankruptcy. I think we, I, think we, I actually sold one. I don't know. I did probably. one. I did yeah. one. Probably. I remember it was like, it was like $150,000. So it wasn't that much. It wasn't a very, right. Big, it was, a, I mean, it was back in that, but way, it was still, a, it was still, a, it was like, uh, I remember mine was like, commission, like I was like 35 grand. Wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so I was like eighteen thousand on hundred fifty thousand dollar house. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I've always just shown shown the product that the buyer likes, and the commission is what it is. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Gonna, I mean, I didn't really, just, like, I didn't push them towards exactly. it. Exactly. Who does that? I mean, I, not an agent I'd want to work with by any any means. No. I, I wouldn't. No. Well, I mean, that's part of what we were just talking about before, right? Some of this uh, DOJ stuff, right? Like where you're almost like inducing the agent to do certain things to try to push a property that's maybe not in the best interest of the, or, or not avoid showing a property. One property has 2% commission. One property has 10% commission. But without the, the agent data out there, showing, how, like why, like, I, I don't even know how I could do that. I mean, there, I mean every, everyone can see. Right. The houses that are not, I mean, all, you, you, not you, all consumers are going on to Redfin to look at what that buyer broker commission is, though. No, I'm talking about like <laughs> um, new builds. Like if someone goes and starts looking for new builds, I mean, you can you can find them online pretty much. Right. You right. go, you drive around, you see like you know 15 different builders out there. You're gonna yep. go and stop at stop at all of them. Yep. Yeah. Maybe. 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 Interesting well, times. Uh, interest rates did come down a little bit. Yeah. What? Yep. Five. Five point one. So today they're at five point two seven. Oh. Okay. Good. So a stat, uh, Kayla and I were just at um, a uh, conference that focuses on single family rentals, um, you know, and all of that connection across the, uh, uh, across the country. And there was one of the stats that they had shared that stuck out the most with me is due to the new rates um, it being as high as they are that over 10 million people or uh, can no longer afford a home. They got priced out of the market. Mm -hmm. They talk 10 about million. How many people, how many people are in the United States? 330 million. Okay. So that's like what? 5%? About 5%. Oh. Yeah. Give or take. Yeah. Three well, and a half percent yeah. of people. 
Well, of the eligible, like of the, the would be yeah, home buyers. Yeah. Well, there's a hundred, yeah, there, and there's what 130 million homes in America, right? Are they so, including? Are they including like 140 people that are under 18 years old? No. Okay. I don't think they're pricing out people under 18. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah, yeah it's this, just. I mean, it's a 10 million people. Well, how like 10 million? Children? They're probably probably 10 million. based on probably based on like affordability, right? Like like what their what the average income was and everything else. With the new rates, they can no longer afford the payment. Um, gotcha. With, with, with the higher, higher rate. rate. Yeah. Right. The, the kind of interesting data point that they <clears throat> threw out that I found, um, just interesting was that for every 25% or for every 25 basis points, which is a quarter mm -hmm. of a percent increase in rates, it prices out 3 million potential first time home buyers. That was a good stat. Yeah. And I've never actually heard that so, one before. So, you know, it, so, okay, so a whole percent, and we went up from what we were in like the mid threes to like <laughs> the mid fives in the matter of like 60 days. And so um, what was that? That would be like three, six, nine, 12, like a lot, yeah. like millions and millions of people. Yep. Well, and we've heard from a lot of people who would know that the rates could go into the sevens. They, they think it's gonna go into seven, seven and a quarter. And then government, you know, will kick in and and uh, the rates happen. will start going down. I don't think it's gonna happen. You don't think it's gonna go into sevens? No. No, no I, I think, think I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna slow down. I think inflation's already I think slowing starting down. to slow down. Yeah, I mean, obviously. I and mean, and you, those raises are already baked in. Yeah. They they baked in like for the next like four raises. Yeah, I mean, they just had a in a half point increase and in, and the rates came down from that. So I mean, it, it was already up. You know, where they they just bake it in. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, the, the the demand and I mean, the, the crazy thing when you really think about it from, you know, just the general supply and demand conversation, the real estate industry in general in America is is such an influential thing, right? It rolls downhill, right? Like it's like one in, I, I heard a stat like this is a long time ago, right? That like basically one in three dollars uh, earned and spent in the U.S. economy has something to do with real estate. Mm -hmm. That's it's one pretty of our wild. largest drivers of yeah. GDP for sure. Yeah. So, you know, the being such an integral aspect of our economy and it, it is still doing really well. And I think that it's kind of sad because you, you read the headlines and if you're just a consumer out there and you're reading this stuff, you're getting kind of nervous. You're thinking that we're in mm -hmm. a bubble. You're thinking that the sky is falling and, you know, but what are, you know, I always talk about like, who's going to come out of a, <clears throat> 2.75% interest rate or 3% interest rate and, and sell and get into like a five and a half percent interest rate unless they have to. Right. So I don't think we're going to see a lot of like movement. I think people are going to stay in their homes longer and, and we're actually staying in our homes on average longer, like 10 years. Yeah. So is that going to get, that's going to increase a little bit. But the reality is, is people are always buying and selling. Yep. And if you're in real estate, you know, this is not doom and gloom. Nope. So what our home sales slide a little bit, at least now you, you can actually get buyers into homes. At least yep. now you can show them product yeah. and they can make a decision and, and maybe sleep on it. They don't have to like write the offer on the kitchen counter, right? Like, yeah, you don't have to have the offer pre-written, press send when, you, when you're yes, in there, right? Yes. That's that kind of stuff. Well, and the other thing too, I think that is really important that we, uh, that was a huge topic um, at the conference that Kayla and I were at is the housing shortage, mm -hmm. right? That that's one of the biggest things that there is no denying, you know, there's all kinds of speculations on actually how much we are how short we are, but it's at a minimum 3 million houses, right? That's where all the studies and, you know, et cetera, uh, show that. So 3 million houses short, man. I mean, that's a, that's a big deal, right? Like that's a big deal when you really think about how many units that, that happens, right? There's roughly 6 million transactions that happen across America or, you know, in residential real estate every single year, what $2 trillion. Think, what do you think the prices of those houses that are short, that were short? Well, that's, be. The, that's the thing. I think mm, that they're too, that's we're not, a good we're question. Not, too high. We're not three million, we're, yeah. uh, two million dollar houses. Short, Great point, right? Where yep. are we? Are we three million hundred and fifty thousand dollar houses short? <laughs> are these are these are these first time home buyers? Yeah, Central that, Central America that, prices. That Keith and I are shaking homes? our heads. We're like, yes, yes. I think you're hitting it on the head, Jason. Is like, what what kind of product is being brought to market? Probably isn't the product that's needed. Well, and that, why do you think some of these hedge funds are starting these build for rent places? Because that's the affordable, there needs to be more affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about, about that because I think it's, <clears throat> it's interesting because I, I know that kind of 
Wall Street is becoming the boogeyman. Yep. And this institutionalization of real estate, as I call it, is 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 being kind of there's a lot of negativity being yeah. Let's let's look at the facts, right? Let's let's look at the facts. facts. Like, is Wall Street the boogeyman? Are these funds public, private, et cetera? Um, You know, are they the culprit here of pushing first-time home buyers out of the market? And hard no. It's 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 a hard no. And I think that so here's here's kind of some of the data. There are 17 million single-family rentals across the United States. Yep. Of those 17 million single-family rentals. Only about 500,000 are held institutionally, which means 16 and a half million homes across the United States that are rentals are owned by mom and pop Pop landlords. And so because of that, you know, it's not the institutions that are, you know, like changing this industry. No, they're just like kind of getting in on this and then the very early innings of it. But the majority of this product is owned by regular mom and pop landlords they own anywhere from like one to a dozen homes and they're the ones that are really leasing these properties out now i think the argument plays in that these institutional owners may actually provide a better experience for tenants they do <clears throat> they There's provide consistency they provide they streamline technology they're that's the big one right there like not yeah, like slumlord yeah. if, you, <laughs> if, if i have a house here in, in gilbert and i rent it out to somebody and they move their house, they or they move their, their family to, you know, Power Ranch here, and their kids start to go to school, and I decide, you know what, I'm gonna sell next year, and I wait till their lease gets up, and I'm, here you go, 30, 30 day notice, you, you, gotta, you gotta leave my house. An institutional investor is not gonna do that, right? right. I mean, oh. they're, they're, they're in it for the long haul. They, you, 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 you run a place from an institutional investor, and you can stay there for five, 10, Ten years, right? Right. So it's you don't you don't have that that well, insecurity of like, hey, I might have to leave. Just and even just the maintenance requests, right? That experience, like how on top of those types of things they are, the technology that they have around those types of things. So like a, an invitation home is a progress. You know, yeah, I one, see so those progress yeah. vans all over the place. They're yep. they're they're through yep. neighborhoods fixing things, and they're yeah, they have they, they have it dialed in. They can they, they can uh, send somebody out to fix that that uh, toilet or the the sink or whatever is whatever's broken right away. Yeah, yep. the property management business in those same conferences is a big deal. Yep. Well, and the other thing too that was that we discussed there, I think that is really uh, we should have brought this up earlier, just because I know we're getting a little probably a little pressed on time, is the fact that rents uh, have compounded at ten percent pretty much across America, and there it's that's that's an anticipation from all of them that it, that's going to continue, right? So. That actually, you know, a lot of times with the interest rates, the way that those are, that that drives affordability down, which pushes more people to rent, you know, in, the, in that in those particular circumstances. And now you have these forecasting rents of ten pound, ten percent compounding as well. Mm-hmm. So, I think that the, you know that's a interesting conversation because you know the only thing I will say is um, you know, obviously a lot of these larger institutions where they uh, where they target houses, they target houses. Right. So like if you're in the Phoenix Metro, Tampa, you know, uh, Orlando areas, you, you know, uh, Denver, Colorado, you know, the areas where they really target those markets, they do do well. And that's because they make extremely good offers on properties and they buy the property based on rent, not what and what the, the rate of the return on that property is versus just what the market will dictate uh, for price. So. So one of the hottest markets right now for these funds to go in and buy homes is Alabama. Really? Yeah, we learned that. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. That's Alabama. Right. So, oh, that was kind of interesting. Um, what city? Is it Birmingham, and and I, surrounding Birmingham, areas? Birmingham, huh? Mm-hmm. Yep. I think one of the hottest areas right now. Should we go buy some houses in Birmingham? <laughs> if yeah, we can. So, we'll, well, we'll, we'll I, be uh, competing. I want to. I don't know who that is. I don't. I don't know if we have anybody. Still yeah, we do. I think we do. Yeah. We're, so, re- we're working on more. Cool. We uh, got any last burning things? We got, we got a deal. What, what's, a, what's a crazy deal you could share with the, the, the listeners that, that we recently put together? Any good ones to share? A crazy deal? Uh, what's your uh, definition uh, of crazy? It's crazy. Juicy. Yeah. Oh, give me a juicy <clears throat> deal. Um, nothing that exciting. Just more acceptances in the last couple of weeks than than we've seen from an accumulative perspective so that just also shows how much the market is starting to change 
yeah, yeah are appreciating absolutely. some of our unique cash plus offers um, more than more than we've seen. So. I have one last thing I'll share just for, you know, listeners out there too, is I I know we have a lot of listeners that, you know, everybody's obviously real estate industry, but even like the lenders out there, we get a lot of uh, lender listeners. Um, If you're not aware, Zudilio is now working with a lot of lenders. So if you're interested in learning more about that type of stuff, reach out to us, uh, get a demo, see how we could connect you to turning you into being able to uh, bring your buyers that you're working with, turning their offers to cash. So you now have access to that. And the other thing for agents, um, I was just on um, uh, a big call this morning with about 90 agents on there and there was a couple of agents featured. And what they were talking about is how they led with the cash offer and pivoted to the listing. One a- agent in uh, particular, Kathy Ryan in um, California, she started working with Zudilio at the end of last year and now she has over five deals uh, in escrow currently that all sourced back to the, uh, leading with the cash offer. All of them turned into two um, listings for her, but she led with the cash offer yep. and pivoted to a listing because she gave them their options. The client clearly chose what was best for them. So kudos to her and what do you go, Kathy? Yeah. Good job, Kathy. Yep. All right, y'all. Exciting. Peace. Thanks for listening.